Okay then, so what's going on everyone, Snowd here back with another video and today we've got a little bit of a recap on what just happened over this weekend and that was the Monster Energy Cup and in case you didn't already know, Justin Barsha did in fact win the event he didn't quite win the million but he did get to take home the $100,000 uh, by winning the overall and as you can see I've put the number 51 on my back and also the name Barsha just to show that he's won it and I am riding a 250F although now he's on a 450 so it doesn't quite make sense but anyway let's get on with the video so we know Barsha had won it but in a pref co press conference just with Ryan Villapoto someone asked him his thoughts on Justin Barsha and he basically said I feel like Justin Barsha's got no respect for any of the other riders because he just seems to hit it into everyone and basically I thought well He's kind of got the name Bam Bam because he hit, rides into everyone. Yeah, that's understandable. But is it because he doesn't have any respect for any of the riders? I don't think so. I think he has massive respect for all the other riders. But he's just wanting to get to the front. And he doesn't know any way other than to bash into people. And he wants to get to the front as fast as he can so he can check out. So that's my opinions on that. Let's, I want to hear your, um, your opinions in the comments below. That would be appreciated. But anyway, let's jump into the first moto. So, Josh Grant back on the JGR Yamaha. Jumped out to an early lead. Grabbed a, a whole shot. Which shows he's definitely comfortable on that bike. Seeing as he, he got his first win on that bike in um, January of 09 at Anaheim 1. That was the first win he's had on his 450. So, Vitaly really likes the bike. And hopefully he can carry that through into the 2013 season. And get a couple of wins there. Um... But anyway, he was quickly overtaken by Ryan Villapoto, who, who would uh, check out and finish the race by almost an eight-second lead. So Villapoto was the only person in with a shot at the million at this point. Um, Justin Bash came across the line in second. And Ryan Dungey, wow, what a race for him. He uh, first raced out, and there was a problem with his bike, his shifter bent. Um, so he wasn't able to change gear with his foot so as he was going over the triples he was changing gear with his hand and there's a pretty couple of gnarly photos of that um, so yeah great results so Villapoto followed by Barsha and Dungey then going into Moto2 straight off the start it was Alessi and Villapoto right next to each other and you can tell they're, they're not the best of friends let's say so I was anticipating a bit of a um, bit of uh, bar banging going into the first bend but there wasn't really too much of that but um, Villapoto just seemed to get the whole shot seemed like he was getting into his rhythm taking off and just in outside the stadium in a little tight section just a little mistake made by Villapoto and his hand came off the bars or so it looked like anyway and he just sent it over the berm banged his head which would take him out of contention and uh, not be it mean that he is not able to participate in the third race which is unfortunate and he unfortunately ended up the race with a 13th <coughs> sorry I just had to take a cough then I've got a bit of a sore throat which is unfortunate but anyway so Villapoto has gone down um, Michael Essie inherits the lead which this is basically his time to show everyone that he, is, he can ride Supercross and Barsha then catches up to him and he's given the name Bam Bam for a reason he ran it in hard on him he wasn't going to shut off for no one and he, he um, bumped into him a little bit unless he pulled up next to him on the straight but he couldn't do anything about it and Barsha was just gone but he used the joke lane pretty much straight away which led in let um, unless he have an opportunity then because Alessi got back into first and Barsha was in second again but of course Barsha knew he had to take the joke lane but still Barsha wasn't waiting for that he wanted to overtake Alessi again so got him in the same spot clipped his front wheel a little bit and then Alessi pulled up next to him on the straight and was looking over at him so you as I was watching you were kind of like anticipating a takeout or at least brake check him and take him up high in the turn but no it was none of that Alessi just looked at him and then seemed to say, okay, you can go by now. And Barsha just rode around him on the outside and just seemed to take off. So, I'm not sure what that was about, but it was kind of a fail from Alessi. Um, but yeah, and then he would later get passed by Dungey. And once again, Dungey's shifter broke. 
So, unfortunate again for him, but wow, he's a salvage in a second and a third with a broke shift shifter, where he's only been able to shift the bike with his hand. So, I'll hopefully link a photo to that right now, so you get to see what I'm on about in case you haven't seen that already. So, the final result for moto number two was Barsha, followed by Dungy and Alessi. Now, going into the third moto, bear in mind that Eli Tomac had been very consistent so far, but just missing out on the podium with two fourth place finishes. So going into the third, third and final moto of the evening, um, Dungy and Barsha got off to a great start, taking the lead early on. And Dungy would be slightly ahead of Barsha, but Barsha would ke keep on catching him up in the same section, just after the start straight. It was kind of like, there was two jumps, then a tabletop, then another three in a row. And Dungy was jumping onto the tabletop, then doing a step off, then doubling into corner whereas Barsha was jumping all the way over the tabletop and then tripling out into the corner and that would save him a lot every lap you could just visibly see him catching up to Dungy every lap which um, it caused Barsha to cut, catch right up to him and actually Eli Tomac was the fastest man on the track he was catching him he came from about fifth or sixth I'm guessing and he would just catch him straight up you could tell he was catching him but he was very smart he used his head and he knew as soon as he catched him, instead of waiting and getting stuck in it, I say slower, but it's not much slower, obviously, because they're the best people in the world. And just he didn't want to get held up by them, so he'd gone into the joke lane, and hopefully they'd do the work for him, so he wouldn't have to pass them. So he went into the joke lane early, and he played it right. He played it perfect. So when Barsha and Dungey went into the uh, joker lane. Eli Tomac had played in sailing, he was in the lead, it was his to lose. But um, Barsha and Dungy, they'd have a good race. Um, Barsha would eventually get, well, he didn't actually get him. Dungy went into the joke lane and Barsha carried on. He, Barsha left it right until I think the last or one before last lap before he went into the joke lane, whereas Dungy left it about three laps left to go. But you could tell. Barsha couldn't get quite past him, but he was right there on him the whole race. Whether they didn't have to, whether they wouldn't have had to go through the joke lane, whether he would have passed him or not, I don't know. But that was just the exciting part of having the joke lane. So um, yeah, the final results for that race were Eli Tomac followed by Barsha and Dungey. And like I say, it was unfortunate for Villapoto to go out so early in that first moto because uh, second moto because it. It kind of seemed like Kazid won the first moto, and quite convincingly, he was just going to take off, seeing as he whole shotted it, and he was just pulling away anyway. So it kind of seemed like he was just going to run off with that moto, and then it would be put down to the third moto whether he could win the million bucks. But unfortunately, he crashed out, which is unfortunate. And so far, we haven't really spoke about Chad Reed. Um, I'm sure it's not the night he was hoping for. He's, he get in the first moto, he got a fifth. Second moto, he got a sixth, which isn't great, and then also he got a fourth. So fourth being his best finish. I'm sure it's not what he was hoping for. I'm sure it was what he needed to get on the box, but at least he's had time now. It's he knows what he needs to improve on the bike. He knows what he needs to get better, and then it's just getting him focused for a one. And hopefully he can do good in the 2013 season. But that was basically it for the night so Justin Barsha would take her the overall which led him left him with a hundred thousand dollars to take home which fair enough to him it is his first 450 race and he went and proved to the best in the world that he can ride at that pace on his first race so really good uh, congratulations to him but there's just thing, a couple of things I'd like to pick up on like there's something. There's one dangerous aspect that I thought of the track, and that was for only for the super mini riders because the jump before the finish line it was kind of like a little double, but it was like a little a little step down. And as the riders they were coming right from the top of the bank and hitting it flat out, and they're still casing it every lap. And in the second moto, it actually caused a couple of riders to case the double after it, and I think they were all right, but they were lay on the ground for a little while. So it was just slightly dangerous, but I think they could have just done with putting a bit more of a lip on that takeoff, and then the night would have gone perfectly. But 
Other than that, it was a great evening. Can't wait for it to come around next year. And congratulations to Justin Barsha, the new Monster Monster Energy Cup winner. So this video is coming to an end now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, hope to see you in a couple of my other videos. And I'll see you when I see you. For daily motocross pro and am coverage, be sure to log on to verbmoto.com. And if you like us, prove it.